Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I think yeah, we meant we we talked about it, I think, before before the midterm project was due, but I, I want to give you a couple extra days for it to be perfect. Yeah. So I do a Friday now. Yeah. Um, uh, oh no problem. I, I, I was uh, I was just really busy that day, so it was, it was hard for me to respond. But yeah. I want to make sure I give you got your summers. But yeah, no last, water under the bridge. Yeah, that last day of the class pretty much finished everything. Uh -huh. I wish I had everything done. So do you remember what things? If you don't know, do you remember when it was like thirty two pages? Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Uh -huh. like computer like straining uh -huh. to do like like you know what I mean like because I think for mine it's three different materials yeah 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 for each one uh -huh. so I literally would have to change it and go back through it all over again yeah so uh, like I didn't know if I read it wrong or I was like mistaken but that's why I read it because I was like panicking I'm just like yeah this is full assignment this way and now it's like my last day which I like I was trying to spend like just editing and stuff uh -huh. you know and like having uh, somebody who wrote I was mm -hmm. like, oh, no, please don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I understand. I mean, technically, the materials kind of the materials give like the consistent. Yeah, but whatever. for this one, for this one particular, I wanted at least two different loadings. But but you were you were fine. So, okay. Yeah, no yeah. no worries. Though. Yeah, I I I interpreted it first as at minimal constraint, like fixed more than that loading. Oh yeah, I, I mean, did, I didn't know it was like fixed support I think loading. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, fixed support and loading. You need that for for any kind of thing. Yeah, you know, but I thought I, I was confused. I thought fixed support and loading uh -huh. was two. Oh, I see. I, I thought see. that the loading you need two loadings. I like, see. Like a force and then a pressure. Or something like that. I see. That's I see. why I panicked because I was only doing the first one pressure with three different materials. Uh huh. And that's probably like I only did one pressure and I already ran all the simulations. Mm -hmm. I have to. I have to do more. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. No problem. Thanks, professor. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, we're doing uh, ANSYS today. And so if you want to start up uh, ANSYS Workbench, um, you know, we can go ahead and, and hit the ground. And today today's going to be a uh, another long, it's a long activity in that your computer is going to be working really hard, uh, but maybe you're not going to be working very hard. And so we want to make sure that we, we get to the point where our computer is working and then, um, you know, and then we can just wait for it. And so when I did this on my own, it, it, I, 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 I lessened it quite a lot. And it still took my computer about 30 minutes to complete it. And so, um, you know, I want to make sure that everyone gets to the part where they run the optimization at least 35 minutes before the class ends so that, you know, we all, and we all leave here today with an optimization. <laughs>
<clears throat> All right, it's uh, 5.30, so let's uh, go and get started. All right, good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Midterm project's done, so yeah, you know, life's good, right? <laughs> For now. Um, so the uh, um, so today we're doing another ANTIS activity. Um, you know, we're keeping on our usual cadence of you know activity every other week, and so you know we have one this week, and then we have one the uh, the literal class session before we go on for Thanksgiving, and so um, you know, and you know, kind of going with the same theme of, of our last activity, this is kind of more I consider it more niche um, um, features of ANTIS that maybe you don't use this every time. Um, I would hope that you don't do optimization every time because it's it, it's pretty expensive, uh, but it is a cool feature and it, and it has you know a lot of strong uses. Um, and, and, you know, I wanted to make sure I cover this one in the class because this is the only one really that has to do kind of directly with design. Okay. All right. And so um, basically the, um, the idea for today's activity is we're going to be optimizing the design of a triangular plate. Okay. And so it's, it's, it's not a very exciting geometry. I, I know, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a, um, just a shape really. Um, but you know, if, if I went any more expense, any more complex than this, then this activity would never be finished. And you would be running your computer into the, into the hours of the night, you'd be running your computer into the ground and, you know, you'd be all upset with me. And so I had to, I had to, I had to simplify the geometry quite a bit just to make this feasible. Um, but you know, I think a lot of the, um, a lot of the concepts I think will be, will be really interesting to apply. Okay. Um, all right, and so you know, just like our usual ANSYS activities, you know, you can go ahead and download the instructions from the um, from the website, and you can download the CAD file. And so we don't, there's only one CAD file associated with this today, okay? And then you can go ahead and open up Workbench, and um, and we'll go from there, okay? Um, all right, and so you know, before we we really get started, are there are there any questions I can answer? Okay, all right, and so let's uh, so let's go ahead and start, okay? And so just like I just mentioned, you know, the, the point of this activity is to optimize the design of a, um, of a plate like this, okay? And so what do I mean by optimize the design? Okay, so it, it's, it's really hard to see here, but, uh, but basically the, uh, what changed in between these two images, despite the fact that I, I rotated one, is the, is the dimensions of the geometry are different in one, in one configuration than the other one, okay? And so if you, if you compare these two, you can see that this, this length right here, Okay, so this distance between here and here, and you compare that to this distance between here and here, right? The one on the right is, is a little bit thinner, right? It's, it's almost impossible to tell, right? And then the, uh, this curvature of this bend is a little bit wider than it is over here, okay? So, and so, you know, I know, I know not the most exciting result, and, and in fact, I was kind of disappointed in the result too, um, but again, any, anything more complex than this, and we'd be running optimization for days, okay? All right. And so the nice thing about ANSYS is that, you know, it has automated tools to, to do this, okay? Because normally when you think of, you know, design iteration, design optimization, you know, we think back to what we did in activity three, right? And so if you think back to activity three, you know, that was our signpost activity, right? And so in the signpost activity, you know, I gave you a CAD file and I asked you to manually change the CAD file in order to improve the results of a finite element simulation, okay? Um, and that's fine when you have a relatively simple geometry, right? And so... I think for the sign post, it was pretty easy to tell that you, you, can, you can either make the post thicker or you can make the sign lighter. And both of those things will result in better, a better result for your final elements. Okay. Uh, but when you have more than one, um, you know, more than one geometry, geometrical feature that you want to change, you know, it becomes, it becomes a little bit more difficult as to say, you know, if I change one thing, how is it going to affect the other ones? Okay. And so optimization is a tool within ANSYS um, that does this, all of this basically for you automatically, okay? All right. And so, you know, uh, we're going to do most of, the, most of the time that we spend actually in the software today is going to be on the setup, okay? And so let's go ahead and open up ANSYS, um, just like we usually do. And then uh, let's go ahead and load in the geometry, okay? And so you're going to right-click geometry, go to import. And then for me, I put it in downloads, okay? And so the file that you want to um, that you want to import is called triangleshell.agdb. Okay, and so this is specifically a design mo uh, design model or file that is of our triangular plate. Okay, and so our first stop today is actually going to be within design model. And so the geometry is complete. And so we're not we're not going to be manually changing the geometry. 
Um, but we need to set a few things inside design models, okay? And so after you've imported the geometry, go ahead and double click on this geometry here. And we wanna open up design modeler um, for us to look at, okay? All right, so is everyone able to open up a design modeler for their uh, for their geometry? Okay. okay, and so the and so what we need to do in design modeler here is we need to is we need to specify what our design variables are. Right? Okay. And so if you remember from the lecture on Monday, remember our design variables are the are the quantities or the dimensions that we're going to optimize over. Okay. And so these are the things that Antis is going to play with, the, the, the things that they're going to modify in order to get us to an optimal design. Okay. And so we need to specify what those are in design model. Okay. Because in design model, this is where we specify all the dimensions of these other parts. Okay. All right. And so for this simple part right here, you know, all the geometrical dimensions are located within sketch one. Okay. And so if you go to the tree outline on the left and you and you go to the section called surface sketch one. You'll be able to, uh, to click on the the one sketch that we're using to make this model, which is sketch one. Okay, and so after you click on sketch one, you know you'll see all the dimensions that we're that we're using for this model in the bottom left hand um, side of the screen. Okay, right. And so if you want to see what these dimensions are, you can go ahead and click on sketching right here. Okay. If you click on sketching, then we go to sketching mode, then you can see what all of the dimensions are. Okay. And so, um, you know, it's a little bit hard to see if you don't zoom out. Okay. And so you can see here that we have this H1 um, um, parameter. And so this H1 parameter is the distance between um, this left edge over here and the uh, whatever this point is over here. Okay. H2 is this distance right here. Okay. And so H1, H2 are, are not actual you know, they they kind of place the geometry in space uh, within the cat software but it, it's not an actual dimension of the geometry itself okay and so let's look at some of the other dimensions and so we have h4 okay and so h4 you can see is the distance in between these two gaps okay, okay. and so it's the width of this of this plate okay r5 right here r5 is the um R5 is the radius of curvature of this of this fillet right here. Okay. And then we have V3, where V3 is the is the width of this uh, um, um, of this part that kind of hangs out. Here, okay. All right. And so those are all the dimensions that we can play with. Okay. Um, and so what we need to do at this point is we need to tell ANSYS which um, which which dimensions here. Are going to act as our design variables, okay? and so for this, and so for this first um, part of the activity here, I want you to specify these two as your design variables. Okay? And so we're going to use the the width, um, the width of the uh, of the plate right here. Okay, and so that's going to be h four, and then we're going to um, use the radius of um, of curvature of this fillet. Okay, and so let's go ahead and, and click on this um, little box right here next to h four. Okay. And so after you click that, you'll see that there's a P that shows up, okay? And then you'll probably see another box show up right here where it asks you to give it a name, okay? And so this name, this name doesn't really matter. And so it's, uh, you can kind of name it whatever you want. Um, but as with all names, you know, it, usually it's, it's nice to give this a name that's descriptive of what it is, okay? And so, you know, I'm gonna give this the name with. Uh, but you're free to name it whatever you want. You can even use the default. Uh, as well. Okay. All right. And so the key observation here is that you know after we click on this box, you know now this is a parameter or this is now a design variable for ANSYS to play with. Okay. And so some of you, you know, probably in the past, you 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 probably maybe accidentally clicked on these boxes before, either in here or inside mechanical, and you probably wondered what you know what this P means. Okay. And so today you'll finally see what those P's are actually used for.
All right, and so the next thing, uh, the next thing that we're going to click on is this um, is the P for R5. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on the box next to R5. All right, and so it's going to give us another prompt here for a name, and I'm going to give this fillet radius. Um, you can um, you can try unclicking it and then clicking it again, um, but if that doesn't work, you can you can rename it later, and so it's it's not that big a deal. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And so before you leave Design Modeler, you should have a P next to H four and R five. Okay. All right. So is everyone able to um, to get these um, get these parameters in there? Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and close this. All right, so that's that's all that we have to do in Design Modeler, right? And so when you come back to Workbench, you'll see that we now have this new window here, okay, called Parameter Set. Okay, and so now that we now that we're asking Ansys to take to keep track of a few parameters, this is kind of where you can kind of see where all the parameters are are taking place. Okay? And so if you double click on this Parameter Set, you're going to open up a new window over here, uh, which lists out all your parameters. Okay, and so if you um, you know if you um, you know, if you accidentally close the window for the naming, this is where you can change the name again. Okay. Um, and so P2, my P2 here is uh, my fillet radius. And so we can just double click this. And, you know, if you want to give it a different name, you can. Um, and then for P3, this is my width. Okay. And so these two here, these are my design variables right here. Okay. And so these are going to be the inputs to my optimization. Um, and so this this list here isn't complete, and so um, you know we still we still need to add our outputs. You know, at the very least, you can check on your inputs and give them a different name if you, if you want. All right, so there's nothing we can do here, and so let's go ahead and close this. Yeah, question. Um, so these are these are I think I think because I unclicked one, um, you know, when I was in Design Modeler and I clicked it again, and so I think it uh, it kind of updated the name as P two and P three. Yeah, because it, it names these sequentially, and then uh, I think each 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 time that you specify a, a parameter as a p, it kind of counts up from from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we can't do anything with that now. So let's go ahead and close it, and then let's uh, open up model right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and open up Ansys Mechanical for this uh, for this guy. <clears throat> Okay, so here we are in Ansys Mechanical, right? And so here is our geometry, right? And so, you know, throughout the optimization, um, Ansys is going to be running um, lots and lots of simulations, okay? And so uh, we need to add our um, mesh and we need to add our boundary condition. Okay? And so for the mesh, I, I'm just going to use a very simple, um, a very simple mesh here, okay? Um, and so I'm going to use, I'm just, first of all, I'm going to make sure that I'm using a quadratic order element, okay? So I'm going to change that to quadratic. I'm going to change my units to millimeters here because the element size I'm going to give is going to be five, five millimeters. This one doesn't matter all too much, um, but you know, you want to make sure your mesh is relatively cheap for this one so that your the simulations don't take very long. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and click generate mesh. All right. And so here is our mesh. And you can see here we have a, a very, very light mesh. And so we only have 519 elements. And seventeen hundred nodes. Okay. Oh, and the uh, and the material that I have right now is just a standard structural steel, and so you know I didn't I didn't change anything on that. Um, but of course you can you can change the material as, as well. Okay. All right, and so now we're going to apply uh, boundary conditions on this guy. Okay. And so when you apply the boundary conditions, you know the boundary conditions we're applying are, are also very simple, um, but you want to make sure that you're you're oriented in the right way. Okay. And so let's say that you know maybe you're um, maybe you're kind of flying around your plate like this, okay? And so in order to get the plate in the orientation that I'm going to be looking at, you're going to go to the bottom right of the screen, 
and you're going to click on this on this blue Z right here. Okay. And so when you click on that blue Z, it's going to put the plate in this orientation. Okay. And so it's going to have one kind of one of the triangle appendages out to the right, and then a curved side on the left. Okay. And so I, I'm a little picky on this just because it, it'll make applying the boundary conditions easier. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and insert our fixed support. So let's go ahead and right click static structural A5, go to fixed support. Okay. I'm going to change to an edge selector and I'm going to fix this entire, um, this entire edge right here on the, on the side. Okay. And so go ahead and select that edge, go ahead and hit apply. Okay. And so now that edge on the left is, um, is constrained. Okay. Then I'm going to add a force boundary condition. So right click static structural A5, go insert and force. Okay. And then I'm going to put the force on the opposite side here. And so I'm going to go put this force on here. Okay. Go ahead and hit apply. And then I'm going to apply a compressive force. Okay. And so we're going to switch this up to components. And then I want the force to go in the negative X direction. So back towards the plate. And so the X component of my force is going to be minus 5,000. All right. Let's go ahead and, and let's go ahead and run an initial, an initial simulation. And so let's go ahead and insert a total deformation and let's go ahead and insert a, an equivalent stress. Okay. And so, you know, pretty, you know, pretty basic um, outputs here, but that's, but that's okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and hit solve. Let ANSYS do its thing. Okay. All right, and you should get results that look uh, that look about like this. Okay, so you should get a maximum stress of about one hundred eleven point two megapascals, and then your total deformation um, you should have about zero point zero three six four or five millimeters of, of total definition. All right, um, any questions on this so far? Was everyone able to get these uh, simulation results? Okay, all right. Okay, and so before we leave mechanical, right? So there's a, there's a couple of things that we need to do. Okay? And so the first thing we need to do is we need to specify um, or I guess the two things we need to do is we need to specify which outputs that we want to optimize over, okay? And so these are gonna be the outputs that ANSYS uses to perform its optimization. And so for this initial, for this initial run, um, I'm gonna use the maximum total deformation as one of the outputs, okay? And so with total deformation highlighted here, so go make sure you're selected on total deformation. And then in the bottom left of the screen under the details menu, you can see here that we have um, a summary of our results. And so we have the maximum, the minimum, and the average total deformation. Okay. And so just like we did with the input parameters, we're gonna click on this box. Okay. And so now the maximum total deformation will have a P next to it, okay? And so that's one output that we're gonna do, okay? Um, another output that you can do very easily is you can do the uh, maximum equivalent stress, okay? Um, but I'll, I'll save that one for, for you. And so for, you know, there's a part of the activity where you kind of try this on your own. Okay. Um, but I did want to show you that there's, there's other parts of the, of the, uh, of the geometry here that you can use as an output. Okay. And so I want you to go back up to geometry up here. Okay. So make sure you click that. Then we're going to click on this, uh, um, this box right here for properties. Okay. So let's go ahead and click yes on those properties. And you'll see that the uh, you can you you you'll be able to see some properties are geometry. So you'll see the the volume, um, the mass, and the surface area. Okay. And so let's select the mass as another parameter. Okay. So let's go ahead and click P next to mass. Okay. And that'll be another parameter for us to for us to look at. Okay. So this is really useful. And so, um, you know, a lot of times when you perform optimization, you want to basically come up with an optimal design that uses the minimal amount of material, right? And so, um, you know, this is, this is a great way for you to save costs on production. So if you use less material, then your part is gonna be cheaper to, to produce and your boss is gonna be really happy. Okay? And so if you wanna optimize over the mass of the material, this is essentially where you would, you would do it, okay? 
right? But basically, you know, any any box here that has, or any property here that has a box next to it, you can also set that as an output parameter, okay? okay. And so, you know, I think there's actually some stuff in the mesh that you can do too, right? And so you can optimize over the number of elements. And so you can you can optimize to make to uh, make it make it so that your number of elements is, is minimal. Okay. You can um, you can um, you can optimize over the quality of your mesh too. Okay. You can optimize over the uh, um, you know over the forces or the loads. Okay. So these would be actually input parameters. Okay. And so there's a lot of flexibility with this. And so whenever whenever you see a box, right, you can you can input that as as a property or design variable. For your optimization. Okay? <clears throat> but for the one that we're going to do in class today, we're going to keep it simple. And so we're going to use the, to the maximum total deformation as well as the total mass of the, um, um, of the geometry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you click on geometry and then your, your menu probably looks like this right now. And so you're going to click on this plus arrow next to properties. And so under properties, we'll probably see the volume, the mass, and the surface area. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you should have you should have two P's before we exit mechanical here. So you should have a P on the uh, maximum total deformation as well as the mass. Mm -hmm. Right. So you know. So you know when uh, when you do this when you're working on this at home, you know, feel free to you know experiment with this as, as much as you can. So this this optimizer tool is, is actually really really robust. Um, the only thing you have to have with it is just a lot of patience because you know it, it does take quite a while to run. All right, any uh, any questions on this before we leave uh, leave mechanical? Okay, all right. And so if you have those two outputs as a P, we can go ahead and close mechanical. Okay. All right, and then we're going to be back in workbench. Okay. All right. And so, um, you know, before before we create an optimization object, we can go ahead and double click on parameter set, okay? And we can see now that we have some new output parameters, okay? And so our output parameters here are going to be P4 and P, well, probably for you, it might be P3, P4 um, for our total deformation and the and the mass of the geometry, okay? And so these are these are outputs that um, Ansys is going to optimize for, okay? And so before we move forward, you know, make sure that you have these four entries here. And so make sure you have the fillet radius, the width, um, the total deformation, and the geometry mass. Okay. All right. And so let's go. And so if you have all those things, we can go ahead and close that. And then now let's actually create our optimization object. Okay. And so the way that we access the optimization is actually from the toolbox here on the left hand side. Okay. But it's not one of the analysis systems. Okay. And so it's actually going to be one of these these things that we have down here. Okay, so you're going to click on this plus arrow next to design exploration. Okay, and so actually let me minimize analysis systems just so we can see it better. Okay, and the uh, and the um, and the tool that you want to use is called direct optimization. Okay, right? and so if you read the tooltip on this, it says it creates a multi-objective optimization based on direct solutions. Okay? All right, so we can go ahead and double click this. And so if you double click on direct optimization, you can see it's gonna create a link, um, you know, directly with your parameter set with a new, um, uh, a new button here that you can um, double click for optimization. Okay. So let's go ahead and double click this optimization and it's gonna take us into this optimization screen um, right here. Okay. All right. And so this is the screen that we're going to be spending, you know, basically the rest of the uh, rest of the time with. Okay. And so we're going to go basically, you know, down this list right here and set all the parameters for our optimization. Okay. All right. And so first thing you're going to click on is the um, is line two, which is the one with the uh, question mark. Okay. And so from this menu right here, you're going to set what's called the global settings for your optimization. Okay. And so from here, you're going to specify, you know, how long you want the optimization to run how accurate you want it to be um, and, and other stuff, okay? All right. Okay. And so the key, the key, uh, the key, um, the key um, parameter here is going to be this guy right here or these two guys. Okay. And so we have one setting here called the runtime index. 
and another setting called the estimated number of design points. Okay. And so we're actually going to look at the estimated number of design points first. Okay. And so you can see for, for this, I have a number of 33. Okay. And so what this number tells me is that in order to complete the optimization, ANSYS estimate that it's going to run 33 simulations. Okay. Okay. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's a fair number, but also not the worst thing in the world. Okay. Um, and so, you know, you can, you, you can use this number here to basically um, gauge how long it's going to take your optimization to run. Okay. And so 33 simulations, you know, maybe each simulation takes about a minute um, because, you know, each, um, each time you run a simulation, it has to change the geometry, it has to remesh, it has to reapply the boundary conditions and run. And so, you know, with all that overhead, you know, maybe, maybe this optimization takes about 30 minutes. Okay. okay. And so the other setting that we have here is the runtime index. Okay. Okay. And so this setting right here gives you control over how long you want the optimization to run. Okay. And so basically the, the longer that you let it run, the better optimal solution that you have. Shoot. Okay. And so you can set this. Okay. And so this is this is basically a setting between one and nine. Okay. And so basically the higher that you set this number, um, the, the, the harder answers is going to work or the more simulations it's going to run, but the better optimization that you're going to have. Okay. And so just, just as an experiment, so don't don't leave it like this. Let's go ahead and click on nine. Okay. Okay. And so when you click on nine, you can see that the number of simulations that um, um, that ANSYS is going to run has jumped to 288. Okay, so this is this is a uh, this is a very heavy optimization. Okay, and another thing you might notice is that the uh, the name of the optimization algorithm is changed as well. Okay, and so this is a method called MOGA, which I'm, I'm not sure what it, what it does. Okay, but if you change this back to medium, you can see that our method um, changes back to an adaptive single objective. Okay. And so you know you don't have to worry too much about the method name, but you know just just be aware that you know the more the better optimization that you want, it's going to change the the method that you that you're going to use. Okay. All right. So we'll so we'll come back to this. Okay. Because because this number you know because this number of simulations also depends on how many outputs that we that we want to optimize over. Okay. Okay. And so the next thing that we're going to go to is we're going to click on the setting for objectives and constraints. Okay. And so this is where we're going to tell Ansys you know. What our outputs are, and what our goal is for each of those um, objectives. Okay, and so when you click on objectives and constraints, you'll see that the table on this right side is going to change. Okay, and so we're going to add entries to this table um, to basically guide our optimization. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on this down arrow here. Okay, right, and you can see that we'll have it has all of our parameters here. Uh, but we want to set some objectives on our results. And so um, let's go for go ahead first and select the total deformation maximum. Okay. Right. And then we need to give ANSYS an objective for this total deformation maximum. Okay. And so when you click on this um, um, objective type here, okay, we can either tell ANSYS to minimize this um, or to make this as small as possible. We can tell ANSYS to maximize this or to make it as big as possible. Um, or we can tell ANSYS to seek a target. And so if we give it a target value, then ANSYS will try to match that target value as close as possible. Okay. Uh, but for the optimization that we want that we're going to run, I'm going to go ahead and select minimize. Okay. Because we let's say that we want to make sure that the total deformation is as small as possible. Okay. Right. Okay. And then on the next line, go ahead and um, select the geometry mass. Okay. And then let's select a target here for minimize as well. Okay. And so let's say that we want ANSYS to also minimize the amount of mass in our geometry. Okay. okay. Right. And so in addition to a, an objective here, we can also um, apply a constraint. Okay. Right. And so a constraint is basically a, a condition that ANSYS has to follow. Okay. And so these are, you know, these are goals, right? And so basically ANSYS is going to try to get the total deformation and the mass down as much as possible, okay? And so even down to zero if it can, right? And so a we can add a constraint to make it so that, you know, we don't want to consider any, any solutions that have these properties, okay? And so I'm just to kind of show you um, how to use this, I'm going to put a constraint on the mass, okay? And so let's go ahead and click on this down arrow. 
And let's say that we're going to put an upper bound on the mass. Okay. And then, um, you know, even though we're trying to minimize this, let's say that the mass can exceed 0 0.275 um, kilograms. Okay. All right, so this makes it so this makes it so that you know we're going to try to Antis is going to try to find an optimal design that has minimal mass, but you know the mass shouldn't exceed 0 0.275 kilograms. Okay, and so you can use a combination of objectives and constraints here to basically get to basically guide the optimal solution that you that you want. Okay. All right. Any questions on uh, any questions on this? Okay. All right. And so now that we have our, our, our objective set, we need to set the upper and lower bounds for our, for our parameters. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and click. You can click on either one. Okay. And so you, you can go ahead and click on one of the parameters here. And you'll notice that the, um, that the table on the right has changed again. Okay. And so this will tell us, you know, what the upper and lower bounds for our design variables that we're going to set. Okay. And so for the fillet radius, you can see that the upper and lower bounds are. Um, you know, nine and 11. Okay. So let's go ahead and change this. So let's uh, have ANSYS look for a wider range. And so let's set the lower bound for the radius to be eight, eight millimeters, and then the upper bound to be 12. Okay. And then for the width of the plate, let's set the lower bound to be 25. And let's set the upper bound to be 35. Okay. And so this just makes it so that ANSYS will search a wider range of, of, of values for your, um, for your optimization. Okay. All right. And so now that we've set the objective and we set the bounds for the um, for our parameters, uh, we're almost ready to go. Okay. Um, but the last thing I want you to check before you go is to I want you to return to the global settings, right? So come back to this optimization here. Okay. Right. And then uh, once again, I want you to look at these um, these values here. Okay. All right. And so you can see these, these numbers change, right? So before, you know, before the number that we had here was 33, um, but because we added, you know, two, two objectives for our optimization, uh, ANSYS expects it's, it's actually going to take even longer to compute that. Okay. So right now this number is set at 97. Okay. And so in order to complete this optimization, ANSYS says, you know, I need to run 97 simulations, right? Okay. You know, and for the for the short amount of time that we have left in this class, you know, we ain't got time for ninety seven simulations, and so we're going to we're going to take this number down a little bit, just just so that we can finish it in the class, right? And so instead of a run index of five, I want you to change it to a run index of two, okay? <coughs> All right, and so you can see that when you when you reduce the run index to two, you know, your estimated number of design points now is forty, okay? And so now our optimization is going to run with forty different points, okay? So this is really important, and so make make sure you check this before you you actually run the simulation. Because once once you once you start the optimization, it's actually really hard to stop it because Ansys just kind of just goes on some error away from there. Okay. All right. Any questions? Or um, everyone everyone was able to set this run index, and you have forty in for that uh, for that amount. Question. Um. It didn't change after after you changed the run. The, it still says thirty three. Yeah. Did you did you add your objectives here? So does your objectives look like like this? Yeah. And so for both of them, you want to put minimize. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, and so if you confirm that your number of simulations is forty, um, although you know it's not the end of the world if it's not forty, you can just you can just close answers and start over. Okay, then you're ready to start. Okay, and so when you're ready to start the optimization, go ahead and click on update right here. Okay, All right, and then answers is going to start launching the simulation. Okay, and so by default, it's going to take you to this screen right here called raw optimization data. Okay. Right? And it's going, to, it's going to take a little bit of time to, to populate. Okay? But once it populates, you can see here that ANSYS is trying out all of these different, of these different design points. Okay? And so if you look, if you look at the, the values of the uh, fillet radius, right? and so it's changing it from 8, um, which is the lower bound, all the way to the upper bound, which is almost 12. Right? 
And then for the width, it's changing this one a little bit more, a little bit more randomly, okay? And so basically, ANSYS is gonna run a simulation for each of these configurations here, okay? And it's not gonna stop until it's, until it's done, okay? So unfortunately, this is, this is the time of the, um, of the activity, which kind of just takes, it just kind of takes a long time, okay? And which is kind of why, you know, I want to get to this point at this, at this time. And so we're actually making pretty good time, okay? And so, you know, unfortunately, there's not much you can do now except for just kind of wait for this to finish. And so, you know, um, if you have questions, if you want to chat, you know, I'll, I'll be walking around the class. But, but make sure you kind of check, check up on this every now and then just to make sure that you're getting simulation results, okay? And so you can see my first one's finished here, right? And so from this first simulation, I got a deformation of about 0 0.046 and my mass was 0 0.19673, okay? And so, you know, it's basically just going to be trudging along and, and doing these optimizations. And so, you know, this is just going to take a while. And so, you know, hopefully these finish before 645, um, you know, and, I, and I, I, I played with this actually quite a bit this week to make sure that it did. Okay. Um, and then once that's done, then we'll, we'll debrief at the end and we'll show you, I'll show you how to actually apply this optimal design to your, to your geometry. Uh, but until then, you know, we're, um, we don't really have much to do except for chill. And so if you have, if you have any questions about the process, you know, go ahead and raise your hand. I'll come see you. Um, but then besides that, you know, it's just wait. So. So this The, the higher the higher elements that you have, it's it's more expensive. Uh, but but I'll, I'll admit too that it, it is. I know they give you the option, but it is a little bit strange to optimize something with the mesh because normally you're interested. You're not really interested in the mesh itself. Like you're running optimization, or you're running a finite elements to find out like what the total deformation. Yeah. Is. So we can run You could, but there's but there's other ways that you can do it. So it is a little bit strange, right? But I think the the reason they have that for the mesh. Is that you can use it for other stuff too. So there's there's other features like if you go back to workbench, um, you know there's other features there that you can use. As well. Can I? Yeah, yeah, you can. It's it's a uh, it's it's a book. And so there's all of this stuff. Um, there's like component system stuff. So I think I think it may be used for that stuff. So maybe not directly for optimization, but mm. uh, it's all you. It all kind of uses the same parameters. So the so optimization. Um, Mesh on the uh, element of the state, it like takes into the account of the multiplication of time. It does, yeah. Okay. So that's one way to do it. But I think, I, I think, in, in pra practically speaking, you don't really optimize with the mesh all that often. It's just probably used for other things. I suggest a uh, task that shows minimize the situation. Yeah. But um, like, if we're going to minimize it, then you could um, another uh, another way that you can use like maybe you want to minimize but you don't want to minimize past a certain point. and so you can say you know, try to get to this number 
So let's say that the total deformation that we want to be you know, 0 0.2 or something. Then we can say, you know, don't go past this point. That's the point. Yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah. so the minimum that Exactly. So we can set. So the default value is Yes. Or we can set it to negative. You can set to negative. Because you can you can you can minimize things like the like the normal stress. And so normal stress you can have like a negative stress that you can compression. And so you can have it be a more negative than that. I saw this style. So the parameters on this column plus uh, beta nodes will be taken so like, yep. I would imagine that uh, a good optimization, like uh, uh, holding the parameter down this front to be fixed in the time pass. Mm -hmm. Is it because that we chose that to? That's part of the reason. But even but even then, the uh, if you keep one thing fixed and change the other one, you can optimize that way, but it's, it's pretty efficient. And so the way the, the more um, the more uh, efficient way to optimize is to kind of scatter the points throughout the, the design space. So you'll very rarely see an optimization method that chooses an index. Maybe if you did time index nine, maybe it does a full full sweep. And so that's that's called a full sweep. You keep one constant, you just change the one. Uh, but even but if you have even more parameters, say you have like four or five, you just keep keep everything fixed except for one and just change that one. That would be called a full sweep. So that's really a really expensive. So if you have like a like five parameters space, that's not uh, and so there's 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 applications of why you would do that, but it's not always not the case. Yeah. So, so so basically oh yeah 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 I was, I was gonna mention that too. It, it, it's taking a long time like this is only like it's been done now but you can do something else like you can just leave this here and, and just work on something else and, and practically that's how you do it in industry too like you said sometimes like Sometimes, like if you want to run a big optimization, you can set it going right before you go home, yeah. and then just let it run all night. And you come back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know this is taking a while and I know it's uh, it's it's kind of a lot of sitting down but but the nice thing about optimization is that you don't you don't actually have to be there, right? And so you can kind of set this going, and you can just kind of do something else. And so that's the beauty of having an automated tool like this. So uh, I was I was just telling Ian that you know the way a lot of people do this in industry is that they set up a big optimization task, and then they set it going, and then they go home for the day, and then they come back the next day, and their optimization is done. And so you know it takes a while, but you don't but you don't have but once you have it set up, you don't have to be there. And so you just let it you just let it run. Thank you. 
Um, you could, yeah, but I think I think there's more efficient ways to to do it with, with mesh convergence, yeah. And so you can you can definitely set up an optimization to optimize on that. But I think I think there's more efficient ways. To do it. Yeah. yeah, I was just telling Ian too that it's it is a little bit strange that you can set a parameter for the mesh stuff because normally you normally you don't really care about the mesh like at least from a from a from a top down perspective like you mostly care about like the results of the simulation. Um, but I think the the fact that you can do the parameter of the mesh. That tells me that you can use it for other features in Ansys too. And so I think other features use use the same framework. We're just using it for optimization. Halfway done. Thank you. 
So before, before, before you actually start. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Yeah. So if you guys started about the same time as me, you should be three fourths of the way done. So I have about 30 out of 40 of my design points done. So hopefully you guys are in the same, roughly the same boat. Thank you. 
All right, guys, my uh, my optimizer has one more to go. And so once this is finished, I'm going to show you how you, how you can finish up this activity um, and then we'll wrap it up today. OK, and so even if yours is not finished at the same time as mine, um, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and show you, you know, what you can do. So there's 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 not much to do after this. You know, after this is done, this is this is the meat of the activity. Yeah. Um, one of my uh, simulation is not as Oh, uh, it's right. Uh, don't worry. So sometimes that can happen. Sometimes, but the uh, maybe I I try to open uh, mechanical. Uh -huh. uh, oh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So the work the work time all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, probably probably the you can do something else. Yeah. You can do. Other stuff, but it's okay. You have 39 under second. Yeah, but uh, it's this computer is running with this. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I think some computers here don't as fast as this. Yours, unfortunately, yours might not finish unless you want to stay here for, for a while. But, all right, yeah, so you can either run it on probably other computers or you can probably run it. All right, guys. So, so mine finished up, and so let me go ahead and show you um, how you can finish up the optimi optimizer, um, as well as um, you know some some tips on how to complete this activity. Okay. All right, and so when your optimization is complete, um, you know you'll you'll have all your data points here. Okay. Um, and so the first thing I want you to look at are these are these entries over here. Okay. Right. So remember, um, you know, these entries right here, these were the things you're trying to optimize over, right? And so P4, that was our total deformation. And then P5, that was our, um, our stress, right? And you can see these line graphs are basically a, uh, um, a way to show you <coughs> what the values for those um, outputs are, okay? And so for the, um, for the, and so for the total deformation, you can see between um, iterations like this, it jumped up and down. And so it try its best to try to get the deformation down to zero, but this is kind of the best that it can do, okay? And if you look at the same thing for the mass, you can see the mass is kind of jumping up and down too. And so, you know, the, uh, the goal for the mass was to get it down to zero, but, you know, this is the best that it could, could do. Okay? All right. And so to find out the, the best results from your optimization, you can, you're gonna go to this area of the, um, of the optimizer called candidate points, okay? Right, and so, after it's at basically after ANSYS has run its 40 simulation, it's going to pick the three points that have the best results um, for you. Okay. And so it's going to be candidate point one, candidate point two, candidate point three. Okay. And you can see the values for the um, uh, for the inputs at these at these locations as well. Okay. And so you can see candidate point one, it basically maximized the fillet radius. And so the fillet radius was 11.85 and the width was about 29.03. Okay. And the values for the total deformation and the and the mass are given are given here. Okay, and so when you have two different objectives like this, you know basically the three points here are going to be trade offs between the two. Okay, and so you can see for this first candidate point, it had the best value for deformation, right? And so it had the most deformation out of all of them, but it also had the worst mass. Okay, but then when you go to the other candidate points, you can see this one has a slightly worse total deformation but a slightly better mass, okay? And so, you know, when you have multiple objectives, it'll let you choose basically which one is, is, is good, okay? And so for this one, you know, let's say that I, I wanna prioritize the total deformation more. And so I'm gonna go ahead and right click on candidate point one. And I'm gonna click um, this one right here called insert as design point, okay? All right, and so once you do that, it'll have a DP one right here, okay? And so that's, that's the main output from the optimization. And so we can go ahead and cl close this optimization, okay? And then we're gonna double click on parameter set again, right? And you can see here that our, our design point or our optimized point is, is here, right? And so um, when the uh, fillet radius is 11.85 and the width is 29.03, you know, this is our optimal, this is our optimal solution, okay? And this is our design. And so to actually set, and so to actually set this as your geometry, you can right click on, on DP1 right here and you can click on set, 
copy inputs to current, but 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 don't do that yet, okay? Because once you click this, it's going to actually change your your input parameters here um, to those of the optimizer, okay? But before you do that, you know if you if you you know if you read through the document, you know um, as part of the activity report, I want you to take some screenshots, you know, of the geometry and the simulation results before you actually run the optimization, okay? And so and and so I apologize. I should have told you to take these screenshots before we went there, okay? Um, but you know now you have a chance to like go into the geometry, go into the model, and into mechanical and take screenshots of uh, of the stuff. Okay, so make sure make sure you read that before you actually apply this optimization. Okay. All right, but uh, but for me, you know, I've I've already kind of done this, and so I'm just to kind of show you, I'm gonna go ahead and copy these inputs into current. Okay. And so that's going to set the uh, our current um, geometrical features to be the same as our optimized point. Okay. And so now we need to go in and update the geometry and update the uh, update the model. Okay. So let me go ahead and double click on geometry. Um, you should get a, a you should get a tool tip that shows up that says upstream data has been changed. And so we can say yes, I want to update that. Okay. And so I'm going to open up Design Modeler uh, again. Right. And so we can see here's our geometry. Okay. And so right, <coughs> right now this is set to the uh, to the original one. Okay. And so in order to apply the changes for Optimizer, you're going to have to click on this lightning bolt called um, Generate. Okay. And so don't blink because when you when you click this, it's going to change the geometry. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and click this. Did you see it? Mm -hmm. It didn't it didn't change all that much because the because the because uh, the geometry doesn't doesn't change all that much right and so in this case the optimized geometry is fairly close to our original one and so it's it's a little bit hard to see okay uh, but when you but normally when you click generate it's actually going to change the geometry you know quite a bit okay all right so I'm gonna go ahead and close this okay? and then we can jump back into mechanical um, and we can view our updated results okay. So one so one reason why you know the uh, the opti the optimization didn't result in big changes this time is because the two objectives that I gave you were, were actually competing okay and that and that was actually by design and so um, you know on on the one hand we had one one objective where we wanted to minimize the the deformation okay and so in order to minimize the deformation we essentially had to make sure that our structure was was strong right and so a stronger structure means it's it's going to deform less okay. And usually, you know, when you want to make a structure stronger, you add mass to it, right? And so you make the parts thicker. You make it, uh, you know, you make it, um, you know, bigger, okay? Because a bigger, a bigger structure has more mass, and that's going to, you know, have it resist deformations a lot easier, okay? But on the other hand, you know, I asked, the, we also asked the optimizer to minimize the mass at the same time, okay? And so you have these two competing objectives that that kind of that kind of cancel each, that essentially cancel each other out. And so you end up with a geometry that looks basically the same as it was before. Okay. And so when you when you go to do the other parts of this activity, you know, try modifying the the objectives so that you don't have two competing things. Okay. And so you can try um, instead of total deformation and mass, you can have total deformation and equivalent stress. Okay. And try to minimize both of those as much as possible. Okay. And so I think what you'll see is that when you try to do two objectives that are complementary like that. Then you're going to end up with the geometry that's 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 quite different, okay? Because for both um, deformation and for math and for stress, you know, you're going to want a thicker part, right? And so what you're going to see is that this width is going to increase, and these uh, and this radius here should actually probably decrease, okay? And so in, in that sense, you know, you should see a bigger a bigger change, okay? But because I chose because we could chose two competing objectives, then they essentially kind of canceled each other out, and so the optimal design is actually not that far off from the initial one okay but we can but we can look and see okay and so if you check the the total deformation um and your and yours might be different because you know i i swapped the order of my of my inputs okay but if you look at the total deformation here we got a maximum value of 0 0.036893 okay um you know which is which is almost the same as the uh, uh as the original one okay and so a little bit disappointing i know but it's uh um but you know I was kind of I was deciding between a case where I show you a case where the optimizer works really well versus a case where it doesn't. Okay, and so you know I wanted to show you this case because it's you know I think it's I think it's kind of interesting. Okay, but when you're doing this activity on your own, you know play around with the objectives, play around with the input parameters, and you know and you'll be able to see that the optimizer will be able to find geometries that are very different from your um, from your initial one. Okay. 
Um, all right. And so that's it for the activity. And so, you know, um, you know, in terms in terms of the amount of things that you change and that you manually have to do in this activity, there, there's not all that much. And so we basically ran through the whole process now. Um, but you can see that running the optimizer takes quite a while. And so, you know, the amount of clock time that this activity is going to take is, is, is quite a bit. So make sure you plan ahead for that. Okay. But the nice thing is that you don't you don't actually have to be there to actually, you know, view the uh, view the optimization. And so you can go ahead and do something else. Okay. All right, and so are there any questions I can answer before we end today? Yeah. Oh, wait a second. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll come. I'll come there. Mm -hmm. All right. Any any uh, questions I can answer uh, for the full class? Yeah. So the your, yours will probably be different because my the order of my parameters was different. Okay. Yeah. And so actually, these results are actually different than what I got on my own computer because I, I put the fillet radiant first because I was kind of clicking around. Um, and so because we picked a time index of two, we did a very, very coarse optimization. And so it was only able to really search through the fillet radius. But the fillet radius actually doesn't have that big of an impact on the results. And so um, your results are probably going to be different than, than mine. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you ran a higher index optimization, like probably index five or something, um, then you would probably get something different and something more more accurate. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so that's uh, and so that's the activity. And so um, you know definitely um, you know so play so play around with this. And so you know it's it is a fun tool. It just kind of takes a while. Okay. Um, and you know someone was asking me earlier about the final project. And so um, I'm 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 working on the final project now. I'm hoping to get that to you guys by next week. But right now my plan for the final project is for you to incorporate um, some aspects of activity five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. And so I'm not going to have you do all of them because, you know, um, that's going to be a lot of work, but I want you to choose two of the features between activities five, six, seven, and eight. So that's four activities. And so two out of those, I want you to incorporate in the final project. And so if optimization is one thing you want to incorporate, then, you know, then now would be a great time to practice it and, and get, uh, and get good. Okay. All right. So thank you guys for, for coming today. Thank you everyone on zoom for tuning in. Um, I'll stick around if you have any more questions kind of individually that I can answer. Uh, but if not, then have a great weekend, everyone, and I will see you. I'll see you next week.
Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I heard about it. So, yeah. But so far, so oh, what I've seen yeah. the, uh, the projects of yeah. okay. you know, yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll do the I'll do the I'll keep everyone updated. Uh, Manuel, do you have any other questions before we sign off? Question. Yeah. Uh, how well does the mesh optimization or not mesh uh, design optimization work in like assemblies? Even though it works. Yeah, it works. Probably gonna take it, a long it takes a really long time. Yeah. So normally, <laughs> I mean, this was a super cheap simulation with a super cheap optimization. Yeah, so you can imagine for like, <laughs> for like an assembly with like a lot of elements, and you use something like higher than time index two. This is what something would take you, you like two days to run. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. No, although normally, and so. And so I, I admit that I, I don't know the details of the of the optimization method that they use. So what is this screening? I'm actually no idea what that means. But I know that there's some optimization methods which let you run in parallel. Okay. And so um, and so if you have like four cores on your computer, okay. then you can say that if I have to run you know 500 simulations, then you know processor one you take the first 100, processor you take uh, the second 100, and so you run them in parallel. Got it. And so that's typically how it's done. But I don't I don't know if these algorithms can do that because some optimization algorithms they depend on the solution. So in order for it to choose the next design point, yeah, it has to run the first one first. And so depending on those results, oh I should go this way or go that way, something like that. Do we are, does our license even like allow for simulation to run more than like an hour? Um oh yeah, yeah, you can run it for more than an hour. You can run it for as long as your computer is not dead. And so okay. um I don't know, I don't know if it lets you do multiple processors. Um, these ones in the lab might, but then, but the student one, I highly doubt that it does. Okay. Um, but the professional license, you can run up to sixteen cores at the same time. Okay. Sure, so, do you like the parameters get more like uh, complicated as if if you were to put a, an assembly in there? It all depends on what you choose, and so it's so you can you can basically set how many design parameters that you have. So we did two here. Um, so two two is kind of the you can even run it with one. And so with one, it's kind of the cheapest one you can do. But the more design parameters that you add, it's good. The cost is just going to go up. Yeah, that's true. Right. And so you have to be really careful which one that you choose. Yeah. And which parameters that you choose, it, it, it takes a lot of experience to find out. Because you want to basically choose the ones that have the most influence on your results. And yeah. so you don't want to bother optimizing it, like random fill it on the other side of it. Yeah, yeah. Because um, then you're just going to be wasting the time. And you got to like simplify the geometry down. As far as um, possible, or you don't have to. I mean, you know, it, it, okay. it certainly helps. It certainly okay. helps, but then you don't want to lose accuracy as a result. Okay. Like you don't want to simplify so much that your simulation results are not going to be useful. So, okay. yeah, it's definitely a balancing act in kind of more in more in more ways than one. Okay, cool. You know, try yeah, it's, it's 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 cool. It's a it's a cool feature. All right. um, Thank you. Yep. Yeah. See you later.